Hello everybody, welcome to my new video and in this video is a little bit different as far as the quality and the construction is uh, regarded. My main PC's motherboard just died. Yeah, we had some storms but it just died on me in the middle of work. So now I have my laptop which is really poor for editing videos. Therefore, it's really frustrating and I cannot do it. So I'm gonna do this in one go, directly saving the video in the OBS right here. So I hope you enjoy it and I will try to make it as entertaining as possible and right to the point. So what I wanna talk to you in this video is creating a project again. So it's like an example video that I did before already and it's integrating I squared C and uh, searching for parts, reading data sheets and creating a quick project prototype. So what I heard before is, well, I use STM32 or maybe Atmel or anything else, but I still use Arduino for quick prototyping. So when you buy a sensor or anything like that, then you can quickly import it into Arduino IDE and test it quickly for the core functionality so you don't have to fuss around in the data sheet before going full ham in the actual IDE for the STM32, which I did. I have lots of Arduinos from the days that I did a lot of projects with Arduinos, but I don't do that anymore because I've, I've gotten very fluent with reading data sheets and creating fast prototypes with STM32. So let me show you how I went about the project for my dad. He lacked IO on his Arduino, fun enough, and the easiest way to do to add more for controlling relays in his uh, particular uh, scenario is to add an uh, I2C uh, IO expander. So it's a device that can be controlled with I2C and the device's outputs as the GPIO function like remote GPIO. And those can be used for his case for controlling relays on and off. So I want to show you how, like a recreation of how I went about searching for the particular IC, how I particularly started to prototype in STM32 and got the core functionality that I was going for. So in this case, I need an IC that has eight pins on the output. I only need a uh, output high and low, so push-pull configuration, and that is I2C uh, compatible. Also, the footprint has to be somewhat uh, uh, easy to work with so for a prototype but I'm probably gonna be using an uh, SMD device so I'm gonna need uh, some kind of SMD to THT adapter for that and then I'm gonna have to solder it up so let me show you how and about that so let me move that to the monitor and on the Farnell I went about searching for an IO expander this is the exact way that I went about so then I found this category of IO expanders. Great. So then uh, there are a few parameters to narrow down the 600 almost devices. So I need an 8-bit one. So it only has eight pins. So I also applied it over here. So where is it? Uh, not number of pins, number of IO. So for eight IOs. I also wanted to work with I2C. So I ticked every I2C option. And then uh, I've also uh, clicked any packages that I will be willing to work with. So, so it's SOP and TSOP. So these are uh, easy to work with. So it only has leads on its uh, sides and it has actual leads. So it's not leadless like TQFN. Also, I want it to be in stock and without any additional fee for transport. So I clicked OK. So this is now only about a hundred of ICs, a little bit easier. Then I click the price because price is also an object. There's no need for have a device that costs 10 euros where there is a device that costs uh, 10 times less and does the same job. So um, this is the one that I didn't find when I was purchasing and it uh, it, uh, it seems that this device could have performed the same functionality for me and I've already seen the data sheet and it's, let me show you, it's actually a bit better because this device can allow multiple of devices and in, it says 64 of these PCA9670 uh, because it has three hardware address pins 
uh, with which it can configure its own address uh, by that those are the pins that configure the i squared c address so when you go down uh, to the actual address you can see that every bit of the address is uh, uh, manipulative so by changing the polarity of these pins uh, so these a pins to either uh, uh, vcc scl and vss or ground or vdd so there are six pins for uh, six different voltages for three different pins therefore you get 64 combination so you can use a lot of these ic's in the same microcontroller uh, stack and this is great if you need more than just 8 or 16 or something like that pins but the ic that went about is the next one down here that is for available for one and it's this one is the pcal 6408 so this is a 400 megahertz uh, 400 kilohertz uh, i squared c compatible it has eight pins it's uh, very good uh, it has lots of good parameters so let me just actually open the already downloaded data sheet so it has eight pins for, uh, controlled by i squared c it has separate supply for the VDD for the I2C bus and the pin voltages, which is great because those relays need 5 volt pin voltages. So VDD will be 5 volt, but the VDD I2C will be 3.3 for the microcontroller. In his, in his case, it's an ESP8266. It also has a power on. The IOs are configured as input. So if you were to have a, such a, an important device that really needs a low or high at the startup, it doesn't interfere with it because it has a high impedance input in the beginning it has a 25 milliampere uh, sink which is uh, which is adequate and it has one hardware address pin so it can vary its address so with that it can only have two different addresses so here it is this pin can configure this address as uh, only two different so if we go down so when we start by functional description you can see that this is its fixed part of the address and this is the uh, programmable one or the hardware programmable one and this is the read write bit so i just pulled this one to low therefore its address is 0, 0100 0, 0, so this is 4 and this is 0 so its initial address will be uh, x40 uh, if you were to put this one high it would be x42 so this is the one important one so let's go further to assess this IC so we can see how we need to work with it. So what we have to change and set in order to manipulate its output pins. So we have a point register and a command byte. Okay, so the after you send its address and it says, okay, I'm here, then you need to send in a command. So what you want to do? In this case, it can be what, uh, which register you want to manipulate or read from. So it has these registers listed over here. Input and output ports, configurations, uh, here we have pull resistors, latch, interrupts, and output port configurations. So the one that I'm interested in is this one, the output port, because this might uh, configure the output states. The configuration, it's, uh, it's always good to look at the configuration. Uh, also output drive strength, and maybe the output port configuration. So let's go. So the output port configuration registers uh, shows and also can affect the output of the pins. So the bit values in this register have no effect on pins as inputs, which is great. So if you're using a few pins as inputs, so writing into these registers doesn't affect those. Um, so these pins actually write the output. The next one we wanted to look at is the configuration register at location free. So we can see that if a bit is registered to one, then the port pin is enabled as a high impedance input. And we can see that this is the default state as listed in the beginning of the datasheet. If a bit is, is, is cleared to zero, the port pin is enabled as an output. So this is what we want. And I want it for all the pins. So I'm gonna write zero to this whole register at the location three. The output drive strength are all default at one and it says this is the highest drive uh, capability so I'm gonna leave this one as default. I don't need this, I don't need pull resistors. 
no interrupts, I don't need interrupts, and the output port configuration register. So this one, if it's on zero, logic zero, the IO is defined as push-pull. So this is what I want. A logic one configures the IO as open drain. So if you were to have uh, LEDs already connected to the supply, and then there, uh, there are cathodes connected to these pins, you could uh, toggle those LEDs this way. But I need a hard push-pull. And luckily, the default values is already push-pull for the output functionality. So I don't need to manipulate this register. So from reading this, you can see that all I need to do is configure the configuration register for all these pins on zero, so I can use these pins as output and then write into the output port registers in order to set different pins, so pins 0 to 7, 2, 1 or 0. So let's go into the IDE and show you how I configured everything. So I have a blank uh, uh, CPU over here, so this is my 407 VG on my Discovery F4 board. And let's start, so first thing is the trace. Next is the clock, so I have a ceramic resonator. So it's an 8 megahertz, so it's connected to external and the PLL clock, so it's running at max 168, okay? I want to have a, a peripheral initialization as a pair of C and H files. Okay, so this is the basic functionality, so the CPU will work. Now I only need I squared C, so I'll just use the first one, why not? enable it and this IC we saw uh, can support fast mode which is the 400 kilohertz one but there's no need for fast so when it says the limit you don't actually need to go to the limits in rare occasions you have to use the minimal or sometimes a prescribed value in this case standard mode is plenty enough so if you have a processor that doesn't have the fast mode you can use the standard mode as well the clock speed is set at 100 kilohertz 7-bit address and everything we can leave default. So let us just save this option over here. So this will generate the code that we need to start programming onto. Uh, what I will include at the end of the video, uh, hopefully the video editor will at least do that, is give you a small video of the representation what's going on when we will write the code to the fullest end. But now let's continue with the code. So this is the code generated by the cube. So the I squared C and the GPIO is already initialized. So let's start. So what I like to do is this user code section two. I like to do those initializations of the external peripherals and some variable declarations. And in while we're gonna do a little test program. So what I wanna do is firstly, create the definition for address. So let's just call it address. It's a bit ambiguous. So uh, you could call it address uh, for the IO, something like that. And we discussed it's for O. If we were to uh, set that address bit as high, it would be for two. But in my case, it's for zero. Then let's create some variables. So we will need one variable at least to create um, a configuration byte. So this is the byte that will be sent to the configuration register that we just saw. We need to set at zero in order to use the pins as output. We can also have one variable as a command byte and we can also have one variable to set the output port state. So let's create those. So I'm going to create 8-bit one because this is all that we need. So it's going to be a command one. Then uh, uh, config and a output one. So let's create a few comments so it's not ambiguous. So this is um, a command to send to the device. It's a, a configuration register state. And the output port register state. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now uh, what I mean by this. So the first command that we need to send is the location of the register that we want to manipulate. So in this case, config register, 
is at location 0 of 3. So the command equals x 0 of 3. And the config register has contents of 0 because we want the pins to be output. In order to send these values with how it's very simple. If you uh, don't understand, please watch my previous videos on I2C on HAL, where I uh, explain everything and the functions that you're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to use the HAL I2C memory write function and going to pass it the I2C uh, uh, handle, then the device address, which is this one, just control space to autocomplete, memory address, so the address of the memory we want to manipulate, in this case, it's the command and the one byte size the pointer to the data that we want to send and in this case is the config variable this is why I chose uh, the uh, specific uh, variables for each command and config because you have to uh, include a pointer to that variable it's one byte large and let's give it 10 milliseconds why not so this will configure our device for my particular needs so output pins high or low now in this case all the pins will be low in the initial so let's start by um, setting the command now as 0x1 because now we want to point to the output port further on okay so let me copy this one and what I want to do for the demonstration that I'm going to be including in the video in the end, hopefully this will uh, uh, be able to process, is a simple binary counter. So I'm going to have this output start at zero and I'm going to send this value and then I'm going to increment output by one. Let's add delay let's say 50 milliseconds as in my video and uh, so what will happen we will send to this device with this address to this register which is set over here the value of the output so if you let's go to the output register so if I send 0 all the bits will be 0 if I send 1 the first bit will be 1 if I send 2, the second one will be 1. If I send 3, and the both of these will be 1. Therefore, both of these pins will be turned on. So this is a binary counter. And because the variable is only 8-bit, it will overflow at value 255 going into 256. It's going to go into 0. Therefore, it will just roll over, and which is great, because this variable is 8-bit and our IC is 8 bits, so therefore we can just leave this going. We don't need any if statement uh, in order to manually roll over the value to zero. So we can just leave it like that. And each time it just uh, goes by one. And the next time when this value will be 255 and you increment by one, it will go to zero. So in next time it will write, it will write zero. So we can uh, compile this. Yeah, so you can see how slow it is because I'm just giving it two cores and it's already compiling the whole library because nothing has been compiled yet. Yeah, so you can see zero errors. And uh, and this is it. And this is working right now on my desk. So the LEDs are going berserk. Uh, so I'm going to include the video of those LEDs flickering and uh, two images or a few images of the breadboard a disaster that I have on my desk so hopefully you found this video helpful so you can see so you don't need to rely on already written libraries and arduino in order to complete your project or continue with your project or having uh, pre-built libraries limit your ic choice so you, you saw i searched for an ic that met my need so in this case was the correct pins the correct uh, footprint the correct price and then when I found one, I just in a few minutes wrote the library by just skimming over the uh, PDF over here. And com uh, depending on complexity, you might have to read more, but this gives you the greater power to really use whatever IC you need to use, not just what IC you can use. 
So I'm just going to leave you with a video of the LEDs counting and a few images. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully soon when my uh, main computer gets fixed. Thank you and I'll see you. Bye. Let's see how much a T sub 16 adapter would cost. Because this chip is one euro. What? What? Almost five euros. Well, well shit, I need it.